It's me. I'm the mistake. I'd like to thank Florian as it's the second year in a row that we organize in this uh, uh, Congress a uh, common uh, session with Sikin, the uh, Cancer International Network. Nothing uh, happened overnight as to uh, the uh, disclosures. Uh, Sikin is about bringing together uh, cancer specialists, pharmacologists, professionals in the health uh, sector to uh, develop tools and recommendations uh, for all that has to do with uh, kidneys, uh, solid tumors, uh, renal toxicity uh, of uh, cancer uh, treatments is key. Uh, management of uh, um, treatments uh, for patients who not only have cancer but also associated kidney failure and also uh, this is taking place within a specific working group on thrombosis, kidney failure uh, and cancer associated. Uh, it's very difficult, of course, to manage thrombosis in such cases. So the first uh, such working group uh, was set up in March 2014, approximately uh, 10 months ago, uh, uh, 18 months ago, and we've moved uh, forward quite a lot. Uh, the first group uh, dealt with thrombosis in partnership with a, a laboratory uh, whose uh, name you can see on the screen. And then we have a research uh, project uh, together with the ORTC, and I'm going to introduce to you the uh, preliminary uh, outcomes of this uh, study, which were uh, presented to the Seeking Congress uh, uh, by Laurent, who works at the EORTC. So the uh, uh, rationale, uh, the first rationale was that it was demonstrated that some uh, trials uh, usual ones or ones that were traditionally designed to deal with this issue, the impact on the morbidity uh, for patients uh, who have uh, cancer, especially for patients with uh, uh, solid uh, tumors. These uh, studies uh, were done in real life uh, for uh, with, sorry, real cohorts. And the question we asked uh, with the EORTC, we wondered whether in the future when uh, having trials for uh, drugs to uh, have a, a screening and identification for um, patients who have abnormal uh, renal uh, functions uh, and to see whether it be useful or not to have this uh, minimum a uh, minimal uh, renal monitoring plan and uh, we paid attention to the database of uh, EORTC uh, trials and we went to analyze the uh, data from patients in this database so we are halfway through phase one of this project uh, to um, assess the renal function of patients. So we have 14 uh, trials that were uh, advanced. Uh, we have six uh, trials, phase three, one phase two, three, and seven phase two. Uh, the EORTC doesn't have a database uh, um, available on uh, BSA. So we have uh, uh, some more EORTC trials, uh, as you can see uh, here on the screen, uh, for bladder, sarcoma, breast, H&N. Uh, uh, so we uh, evaluated the renal function with a uh, Cockcroft and Gold uh, formula with uh, the modification of diet in renal disease uh, recommended uh, by uh, the national institutes and at international level. And we tried to stratify the uh, various uh, severity stages of uh, renal impairment. In front, we have uh, five uh, such stages. And here you have the definition as uh, quoted by EMA, the uh, European Agency for uh, Medications. Uh, it's going to be uh, made public through a publication soon and be uh, benchmarked at the beginning of 2016 uh, for recommendations for uh, clinical trials and for uh, trials on uh, drugs. So uh, this is going to be recommended uh, in the future by EMA. Uh, so median age 56 years, uh, this 
uh, prospective uh, developments of uh, medications. Uh, uh, 68% of males, 32% of women. So we're not uh, far from the 1.73 square meter, which is the value of a body surface on which we rely when we use the MDRD formula with milliliters per minute per uh, square meters. When uh, for others, we have uh, uh, milliliters per minute per square meters. Um, so we have patients that have more than 1.8 meters of our body surf surface here um, at the core of the study. Here uh, we don't have main differences between the three uh, assessment methods. Uh, this is a key uh, piece of information uh, as uh, we have a mean age of 50 years and we know that for young adults that is less than 65 years old there's no precision in the assessment of renal function between uh, Croft Gold and the others and this is often forgotten in clinical practices as well as in literature nevertheless even though median values uh, uh, differ only slightly uh, in terms of uh, se the severity of uh, renal, renal impairment. Uh, when I'd like to draw your attention to uh, what uh, I underline here on the screen, we have only 33 to 45 percent of patients uh, within these uh, trials who have normal renal function. That is a flow of filtration that is superior or equal to 90. So this means 50 to 70 percent of these patients include did in uh, prospective trials have a renal function that's not normal and we have a proportion of patients who have real uh, impairments so th that is uh, flows uh, flow rates that are below uh, 60 and here uh, we see a variation from 19 to 23 percent for patients who are considered to uh, considered to be normal uh, kidney wise so you see uh, the differences that come out of this literature. 19 to 23 of them have abnormal renal functions below 60, for which it might be necessary to reduce doses to avoid over-medication. Uh, when we have a specific analysis for uh, patients above 65, uh, we have a, a boom in the number of uh, uh, patients with kidney failure, 54% uh, with Cockcroft Gold. Uh, Co Cockcroft Gold for uh, patients above 65 years are going to uh, overestimate uh, the renal function, which is why it's normal that we have a, a greater number resorting to uh, Cockcroft Gold. And now, um, you see uh, the difference between uh, elderly uh, patients and younger pa patients. We have more uh, renal impairments uh, for elderly uh, patients. This uh, seems quite uh, obvious, but this is not real life. These are selected patients, uh, and you always complain that they are uh, better. Uh, they are in a better condition than people in real life. It's not the case here, but this is uh, uh, what's very much uh, in. Uh, the trend. Americans uh, ask themselves uh, the same uh, question, and uh, this uh, uh, was uh, this publications. W this publication was made available online not uh, long ago uh, on the development of anti-cancer uh, uh, therapies. Uh, to conclude. Uh, uh, in uh, phase one of development of anti-cancer therapies, we have uh, renal failures that weren't identified or analyzed as such. This is to be uh, really taken into account and a decision has to be ta uh, taken. And uh, this I put in red because I disagree with them. They conclude that without a clinically meaningful increase in the risk of toxicity of this renal impairment. I don't agree because when you have a look at the article on which they based uh, their conclusions, 
questions, and I invite you to check if you don't believe me. We have 39% of increase in the incidence of non-hematological grade 3, 4 toxicities for uh, in patients with kidney failure versus uh, non-kidney failure patients. We have an increase of 133% in grade 5 toxicities, 1.4% of renal impairment uh, uh, patients versus uh, non-impaired patients. Uh, and uh, uh, nine times out of 10, this means uh, death. So this is, for me, quite significant. And an increase of 49% of uh, grade 3 to 4 toxicities, non hematological or hematological, which means 51.4% of the patients renally impaired versus 34%. Uh, so I don't see how it can be said that it's not uh, significant, so I disagree with their conclusions. But they asked the same questions for phase one. Phase, uh, uh, for phase one, we went for phase two and three as well. Thank you uh, for uh, the <coughs> validation I got for the OERTC, from the EORTC, sorry to mention uh, this uh, project. Uh, we have also work taking place in uh, Belgium, what we called onconephrology. Uh, that's the that's the field uh, that is studying this aspect more specifically. Thank you very much for your attention. Do you have questions or comments? Envie d'un café. <coughs> I'd love a coffee. OK, you, you'd like a coffee? Oh, yes, there's a question there. Speak in the mic, please. Uh, given the decline in renal function with age, how much overlap is there between your group and people studying aging gero-oncology? Um, how much is age a factor driving some of this dis difference? Uh, if I understood where your question, your question is, uh, how the age influences the renal function, am I correct? Yes, and, and whether or not the majority of patients you're, you're identifying with reduced renal function are in the older population of patients. Okay. Um, the influence of age on renal function uh, as one major effect is the aging kidney. It's, it's considered, usually considered in clinical practice that over, uh, well, People often disagree on that, but let's say uh, over 55 of age, we are losing each year one milliliter per minute per 1.73 square meters of renal function. Everybody, all of us. So this is what is considered. So at the age, uh, if you're considering a, re a normal renal function at 100 milliliters per minute at the age of 50, when you reach 65, you, have, uh, uh, you already have a decline of 15 milliliters per minute of renal function, only by the aging process. The other explanation and the things that have, the, to my opinion, the major impact, however it has not been really described or analyzed um, uh, with this view, is the comorbidities. Uh, when, you're, well, when, the age has, uh, when the age is, uh, is uh, increasing, you increase in parallel, almost in parallel, the number of comorbidities and the severity of comorbidities, especially the incidence or prevalence of diabetes is increasing with age, the incidence or prevalence of um, uh, hypertension is increasing the age, uh, with age, and these two specific comorbidities are clearly have an influence on renal function with specific uh, renal uh, damage caused by these comorbidities. So it's the same in patients with cancer, in elderly case, uh, patients with cancer also. Uh, regarding potential uh, collaborations specifically on oncogeriatric, uh, we, uh, we have worked in 2006 uh, with the SIOG, the International Society of Geriatric Oncology, on guidelines, clinical, and, uh, guidelines on cl uh, clinical guidelines on how to screen for renal dysfunction in elderly cancer patients, and clinical guidelines on how to um, handle anti-cancer drugs in patients with reduced renal function. Uh, these two publications have been published in 2000 seven in uh, one in anatomy oncology and the other one in the European Journal of Cancer. Um, and we are currently uh, working with the SIOG again to update these guidelines and develop, trying to develop uh, prospective clinical trials in order to study a number of points that have not been clearly decided yet. Just to add a comment regarding this point, it's a major point that the vulnerable patient, the frail patient is in fact a complex 
association of all these comorbidities and the kidney dysfunction, the age. In fact, as uh, there are synonyms. Uh, in fact, it's it's the the faces of, of the same process, which is the vulnerability, the frailty. And uh, again, uh, there are many, many studies showing that in cancer patients, whatever, colorectal, renal, breast cancer, if you are taking the age, renal deficiency, renal impairment, uh, venous thrombosis, comorbidities over two, all these factors are independent risk factors for mortality and worse prognosis. So, in fact, the kidney seems the sum of all this frailty. And it's important now to, to take this point in our mind using, again, many, many drugs with a risk of accumulation and an increase of such iatrogenic risk. 